Good evening, folks, and uh, glad to have all of you with us tonight. Glad to have our visitors that are here in the sanctuary, and certainly honored to have all of you that choose to tune in to us tonight. Um, think about it, it's been several months now, hasn't it, that we've been doing this, and, uh, and we'll continue as, until uh, we're relieved of it. Uh, once this virus begins to lift, and maybe we can get fully back into the house of the Lord and uh, be able to uh, have our normal messages and time to be together, and our Sunday school starts back. So I look forward to some normalcy <coughs> that will come. And so, so until that time, we'll continue to ride uh, our vehicle that we have right now, and that is Brother Dwight and, and our ability to to go out onto the Internet and to be able to share our message. And it has been an absolute blessing, and I'm so grateful for it and pray that God will continue to bless it. Um, and we're continuously monitoring, you know, what we're doing. I was asking Mark, I, for those of you that ever wonder if you ever send me a message, I am not on Facebook. And, uh, and for <coughs> several reasons uh, that I'm not on there, but Mark is. And so what I do is I have Mark and then sometimes even my wife, I will have her to, to let me know things. See, but Mark can look at what... Uh, responses we have there and so um, I try to keep up with that and so for those of you that have sent messages and I know there's several that that do that uh, on a regular basis I certainly appreciate that feedback and I appreciate the wonderful comments that we've had and we even have a comment or two every once in a while that ain't so wonderful and that's okay too that's part of it they, we, we can't make everybody happy but uh, we're all honored to be here tonight and uh, again we'll work through that <coughs> Y'all forgive me, I got a little bit of a drainage issue that's going on from all these allergies, and so uh, I certainly uh, ask the Lord's blessing. Tonight I want to ask you if you would to go with me tonight in prayer as we seek His face and as we call upon Him and we ask Him to bless us in our time together. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, O oh God, for this privilege that we have to assemble again in the house of the Lord Father, I'm thankful, O oh Lord, for the presence of God that is here. And Lord, you promised to always be here. That, Lord, you would bend over from your throne and that you would open your ear to our prayer. And God, I ask you today to move in a mighty way. I ask you, Lord, to speak to all of our lives. And that, Lord, you would touch the things in our life that we need. And God, I pray that, God, you would feed us through your word. Father, I pray today that, Lord, you would be magnified in honor for you're great and mighty. You're a holy God. And Lord, as I preached, Lord, the best I could Sunday morning, that God, as we enter into this season of, of thanksgiving and praise, God, may we honor you for who you are and for what you have done for us, Lord, and your faithfulness to us. Lord, I thank you for all that you have accomplished on our behalf. I thank you for all the blessings you sent our way, and God, I honor your name. Lord, it's such a privilege to even be able to stand here and to open my mouth, Lord, and to be able to speak, Lord, and to praise you because, Lord, you, you have been far better than we deserve. You've been far better than I deserve. And, God, I'm thankful for that today. Lord, we ask you today, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins, that you would cleanse our hearts of all unrighteousness. Lord, if there be anything in our lives, in our church's life, or anyone that's hearing today, that, God, that you would cleanse it and wash it away. And that, Lord, you would renew a right spirit within us, Lord, that we might honor you and be pleasing to you. We pray that, God, you would fill us with the Holy Spirit. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just speak into our life and speak life into us and help us, God, to do the things that are right in your eyes. And, Lord, we'll just thank you for it. And we'll just praise you because, Lord, you are worthy. And, God, we just lift you up and praise you and honor you today. And we magnify your name. And on this week of Thanksgiving... God, help us to be grateful for all that you do for us and for how you have blessed us beyond what we can even imagine. So, God, today as we come and we bring these supplications before you, and, Lord, as Pastor Mark comes up in a few minutes to lead us in our prayer before the throne of grace, God, I ask that, God, you would, Lord, hear each request. And, Lord, each one that we have failed to mention today and each one that may be on our heart that we don't even think about at this point, God, I'm so thankful that you do. And, Lord, I just honor you and praise you, and praise you, Lord. So, Lord, be with us right now. Watch over us. Bless in our time together. And then, God, I ask you to be with the message today, Lord, that you would help me as we continue, Lord, on our, uh, 
uh, messages on heaven. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to us today as we go a little bit different track. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to be blessed today by your word. Now be with us, Father, we pray. And hear our request, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to share with you uh, some names to just remind you that we want to continue to pray for and uh, certainly want to lift up Brother Gene Booker. Uh, Pastor Booker uh, has a longtime preacher and many of you will know him being here, but he's a very, very sick man and uh, we certainly want to lift him up before uh, the Lord and ask the Lord today to move in his life and that he would be with him and I'm sure to comfort the hearts of his daughters and his wife as uh, their mother is dealing with uh, Alzheimer's, and Brother Gene does not have Alzheimer's, but he has Parkinson's, and now he's got this COVID, so uh, be praying. It's, it's really hard for him. I had the privilege this morning of speaking with Andy Gregson. I, uh, he's our district attorney, and uh, he looks wonderful. He looks really good, but he has a very serious heart uh, procedure to be done on December the 2nd. Uh, he is in the process of losing weight. And uh, he, he looked really trim and really good, but, uh, but needs to continue to get the weight off, as, as do others of us. And I won't mention any names. And Doug, you can't say anything just because you're skinny. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm up here, got too much, but we really do need to take care of ourselves. So uh, remember Andy, if you would, today. I want to pray for Randy Duggins. Randy, uh, again, is, is one of our maintenance people here at the church, our janitor that he and his wife... I think do such a wonderful job for us. Randy's had a struggle. He's gotten hurt on a fall, and uh, he's trying to rehab, and will be coming home soon. So I ask you to pray for Randy. I pray especially for his wife that God would help her as she tries to take care of him and keep the family going, and she continues to work here. I want to lift up Tammy Van Cannon. She's undergoing uh, uh, treatment for cancer. She's uh, had surgery fairly radical surgery, and now she is trying to mend and get back on the road to wellness, and so we lift her up and pray that God would be with her. I um, want to remember uh, Kathy Needham today, and Kathy had brain surgery and seems to be doing okay, but I haven't got the latest report, and we certainly want to remember that. Then uh, I think about Sandy McNeil. Sandy is having surgery uh, as we speak this day, or I guess be yesterday when you hear this. But uh, she's having surgery. By the time you get this, she will already have surgery on her hand. And, um, and we want to lift up her sister, Cindy. Uh, Marcia Soto, I believe, is her name. Uh, we want to lift up Cindy. She is uh, very sick and uh, don't really know for sure exactly what it is. But just pray that God would be with her and His grace would be upon her. We want to remember Carolyn Strider. C Carolyn has come down with bronchitis. And uh, she's a very sick lady, and we want to lift her up and continue to pray for her son Mark as he continues to battle cancer and uh, continues to remain faithful to the Lord. I uh, want to lift up Mary Cordray. I talked to Mary this past Sunday and, and um, she was telling me that she's really struggling with some health issues and her knees and so we certainly want to lift her up and I told her that we would pray for her. Faye Allred just praises the Lord and says God's done a miracle in her life and uh, continues to bless her so we just want to lift up Faye. I uh, want to pray for Bill and Jewel Applewhite, especially Jewel, uh, as she deals with some of the health issues that she's got. And uh, we want to lift up Roy Barnes, as Roy is facing uh, fairly serious spinal surgery, being more in the upper region, and he's got that coming up in December, I believe it is. And then we want to lift up Barbara Brower, as she's convalescing from, from uh, her sickness and her time down there in the hospital down at Oak Island. I want to lift up Joe and Cat Church, and especially Betsy, as she struggles uh, with her issues right now. Pray for Betty Dyer, and Betty is uh, Betty. Betty really needs us to pray that God would encourage her and and would just help her. She has uh, expressed that she's a little bit afraid to be alone right now, and um, and she's a little scared. And so we just need to pray that God would be with her as she heals from her fall. Want to lift up Nicole Hedgepath. She has a doctor's appointment, I believe. I uh, believe it would have been Tuesday. Uh, you'll get this on Wednesday. So uh, she's got a doctor's appointment. And so we want to remember Leonard Ingo and Lunette, as Lunette has, uh, um, I think she's had the COVID down there, but uh, I don't think she's had major symptoms, I don't think. And so want to continue to remember her. 
I uh, want to continue to lift up our sister Donna Jones and pray that God will just strengthen her and be with her. Pray for Bob Joyce as uh, Bob has procedure that's coming very soon for Judy Castle. Uh, pray for Nancy Mason today. Uh, my mother, is uh, she had a rough day yesterday and just pray that God would continue to be with her. Uh, pray for Shirley Ridge as she heals from a cracked bone in her leg and pray that God would heal that where she can get back to church. And then Mary Lee Ruth, we want to lift up Mary Lee and pray that God would touch her and her husband. And we think of Rosalind Shad today as we pray that God's blessings would be on her. We want to continue to lift up Pam, that uh, God would continue to bless her and pray for Ed Spivey. And uh, as we said earlier, certainly we want to continue to remember Mark Strider and all those that are dealing with COVID and all those that uh, have uh, different types of viruses and uh, uh, bronchitis and all that. Uh, it is the time of the season when there's a lot of bronchial stuff that's going on, a lot of drainage, and so we certainly lift up all those folks today. Um, I'm going to allow Mark, when he comes up here, if he'll just give you uh, our numbers on our shoe boxes, uh, Operation Christmas Child, and so I'm going to ask Brother Mark if he'd come now. Mark, I got those wrote down for you right there. First of all, thank you, Balfour Baptist Church, for your uh, faithfulness in giving. Uh, our total for the church giving in shoe boxes was 827 shoe boxes. Uh, we sent out of here 15,003 shoe boxes, which equals 100 cartons that they were packed in. 1,000 cartons. 1,000 cartons, yeah. 1,000 cartons. So uh, hats off to everyone who helped, um, brought food in, and worked hard. Uh, but it's a good kind of work because you know what you're doing is going to help those who are in need. And uh, those children around the world are going to be blessed. And I think those who helped and donated will, be a, uh, will receive a blessing for that. Uh, also remember the churches that have been uh, shut down for a few weeks for COVID in our area and the pastors and the church families there. So Amen. let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you. As we embark on this Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow on Thursday. And so Lord may we come before your throne tonight to tell you how thankful we are Father. That you have paved the way for us to be free. To be uh, let loose of the bondage that once held us. Because of what you did on the cross of Calvary. Yes. And Lord may we never forget that how you were scourged, how you were beating, how the crown of thorns were placed upon your head. And the word says that you open your mouth not. Yes. And God, for us to live in the land that we live in to where we have plenty, Lord, how could we open our mouth and complain? But we do. So, Father, forgive us of that. May we be humbled this Thanksgiving. May we really realize and understand and know that, Father, it is by your grace, your mercy, that you have set us free. Your resurrection on the third day nailed it down for us. And, God, that we can know that when our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that one day you're coming to call us home. But, God, until that time, may we seek your face. May we do the things you've called us to do. May we bless others. And Lord, I know there's a pandemic going on, but the greatest thing is you already knew that. Amen. So God, let us have some faith in who you are through us. Let us have the faith to trust that, God, that you're going to help us and take care of us. And you will, Father. Your word says that. And so, God, may we go into this Thanksgiving being so ever grateful to live in a land of the free and home of the brave. And God, we should never, ever think less than that because you're still on the throne. Amen. You still bless. Yes. God, the power of your Holy Ghost is still evident in moving and working in our midst. And God, I, I just am so thankful that God, that the Redeemer that you left here for us, the one who calls us out when we cross that line and the one who calls others out who never really accepted you, or found the truth in your word. 
And so, God, we're thankful today for the many blessings and for these names that are on this prayer list. There are many names that wasn't even mentioned, but, God, you know them all. So, God, we pray that your hand will be over each and every one, that each family that is watching would be blessed and those who are tuning in. And, and God, I pray for our Balfour family that you would keep the blessings upon them and I'm grateful for them. And Lord, protect them from this sickness that is running rapid in our land. But God, I'm also grateful and thankful for the ones who volunteered down there for Operation Christmas Child and those who came by and gave encouragement and those who fixed meals and those who gave up their time, Lord, to be a blessing to others. And so God, they know who they are. And Lord, I am so grateful to be a part of a team that understands that it's missions. It's reaching others for your kingdom. It is kingdom work. And so God, may we be thankful that you allow us to do that. So God, let us never be short-sighted in what you've called us to do. May we always take the word of God and we live by it. And may we apply it to our lives so Lord, that we can reach other people. And so, God, as soon as this Thanksgiving is over, we bust right into the Christmas season. So, Lord, the prayer tonight is that let us be thankful tomorrow. Yes. Let us be thankful every day after that. And, Lord, when it comes time to celebrate your birth, as you came as a baby in a manger, Christmas, Lord, let's be humble. Let us not think that we're better than anyone else. Yes. Because, God, it's by your grace that you've placed us in this land, in this country, in this house of God. And so, God, may we bring cheer and happiness to those around us. And, Lord, for those families who have chosen to stay separate this holiday season, God, I pray for your grace and mercy and your Holy Spirit to speak to them, Lord that you would let them know that you're there with them. I think about the, our senior adults who are in the nursing homes. And God, do you know they, that they're lonely and, and they miss their family. So God, could you send some extra grace for them? May they just call upon the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Lord, they find comfort for their soul. Yes. And God, for their family members that can't be around them, Lord, bless them. Let them have a wonderful Thanksgiving, knowing that you're still in control, that you love us, and you've given this time for a time such as this to go into a dark, sinful world and shine the light of Jesus Christ. And it's in your name I pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Remember, folks, Jesus loves you. He really does. It is my privilege today to be able to bring you a message tonight that is entitled, Does Heaven Really Exist? So what do you say to someone who doesn't believe in heaven? I wonder how many of us out here tonight have run across somebody that has been skeptical about their belief that there truly is a heaven that exists. Well, I believe this, that you have to tell them about Jesus Christ and the blessed hope that we have because of his death on the cross for our sins. I believe that that at a minimum today is what all of us have to be willing to do if we run across somebody who doubts the reality of heaven. Now God sent his son who gave everything. He gave his life blood. As we've talked many times, he went through the scourging and the beating. And he took it all without opening his mouth as brother Mark prayed well ago. That he never opened his mouth one time, but he did it willingly and shed his blood. He drew his last breath on that cross as he was nailed there, suspended between heaven and hell to give his life for you in order that you might have a blessed hope. And his lasting promise to purchase the souls of men and women, boys and girls for the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus did for us. Sometimes we're undeserving. Sometimes we don't deserve what God has done for us, and yet we're reminded that Jesus did it because of his great love for us. Jesus rose from the dead by the power of God to confirm heaven's reality. 
And you know, it's not heaven that saves us today, but heaven is a place that we all tend to go. We're all planning on going. That's where heaven is going to gather us together. So believing in Christ settles the question about heaven. If you believe in Him, then the Word of God says clearly, there is a place that is being prepared for all of us. Now, Billy Graham told of this true story many years ago. It says, a young man wrote and said, as far as I'm concerned, once you're dead, that's it. The only life we will experience is the one we're living right now. Life after death is just a myth. Well, Dr. Graham responded and told this man in his letter back to him that his letter saddened him greatly because it meant that he was living without any hope. And he wrote this, Have you honestly faced how empty and meaningless this will make your life? Right now, this may not bother you very much because you're young and healthy and energetic. But what if something goes wrong? What if you have a serious accident or you lose your health or someone you love abandons you? What if all those things happen or what if uh, will happen when old age creeps up on you? You know, my mom tells me all the time, she said, I feel like I'm headed for the last roundup. And I said, well, Mama, I understand. I said, because we're all headed to the last roundup. Just some of us, we don't know when that day will be. But what if old age does catch up with you, with all of its problems and disabilities? You will be facing the future without any hope. And he said, what a terrible thought. Billy Graham said that he urged the young man to look to Jesus Christ as he is found on the New Testament pages, and to give his life to him. Folks, that's all he could do, and that's all that any of us could do. When you, you think about this, uh, my mind was thinking actually a while ago, there was a little lapse in what I was saying, because my mind was engaged on something, and I elected not to say it, but you think about those that we've been around in our lifetime, who don't necessarily believe like you do. I can look at one of you ladies today and tell you that there's some people that don't believe like you do. There's some people that don't believe like Mark does. There's some people that don't believe like the Underwoods do or the pastor today. And, and they have trouble getting to that point. Well, all you can do is point them to Jesus and just trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to speak to their life. You see, the greatest decision, the greatest choice we will ever make is saying yes to accepting Jesus Christ into our hearts. That is the one decision that is greater than any decision that you'll ever make in your life. It's the greatest decision that is facing any human being in this world today. Now the greatest discovery we will ever make, uh, w that is ever made known, is to know the love of God. To be able to experience firsthand the love that loved you so much, that Jesus literally, y'all remember this big cross that we had laid here. It was a heavy, big cross. And on a cross very similar probably to that. They laid Jesus' body and they nailed him to it. And he was nailed there, the Son of God, actually God in the flesh. As he came in the form of Jesus Christ and it opened not his mouth, but he laid there and he took the penalty. He took the payment for each one of us. And when he shed his blood. What greater love can a man have than he laid down his life for his friends? And that's exactly what he did when he fully demonstrated that sacrifice on that cross for us. You see, that's really what Christmas is all about. It's not so much about the baby Jesus coming. That's powerful. The incarnation of Jesus and him coming, that's powerful. But it's all about that God stepped down through this world and that he came in the form of a human being and was born into this world fully human and yet fully God. And that he grew into 33 years of age and he laid his life down as a ransom for all of us. This is the power that transforms a man's life. That transform a man's myths into Christ's truths. 
This morning, Mark and I were having a conversation, and we were talking about one of the gentlemen in our church today. And I won't mention his name because God knows who he is. But he made a, he made a step toward these shoe boxes in making sure that, that we got the number that we needed to be able to achieve our goal. And I looked at Mark, and he looked at me, and that is an example right there of a man who truly has the blessed hope in his life and has been transformed and is being transformed by the power of God. And folks, that's what it's all about. And perhaps each one of you would fit into that today. Jesus did not die on the cross for people's sins so that we would believe in heaven. Did you know that? Now this, this is pretty simple, and yet it's pretty profound. Jesus did not die on the cross for people's sins so that you'll believe in heaven. But that you'd believe on Him. And that's what... It is that we have to do today. We must believe in Jesus. We must trust in Him. Heaven is prepared for those who believe in Jesus. Now, heaven does not save souls. It collects them. So heaven is being prepared for all of us today. For all that truly know Him. Now, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. So if you would, take in your Bible and turn over to Matthew chapter 13. And let's read a couple of verses of Scripture here, if you would. Chapter 13, and we want to look at 45 and 46. And he speaks about heaven here. And he said, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking godly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. And then it moves on into another topic of talking about heaven. But folks, I want you to understand, one of the parables that he spoke about was about heaven. That today, you have become rich when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it ain't about money, and it's not about possessions, but folks, you have acquired it all today when you have put your faith and trust in Him. The merchant of heaven is looking for souls who will love Him. He's looking for people, men and women, who will choose to love Him. Now let me ask you a question today. And I know this steps on some of our toes. It steps on my toes. But are any of us in this building today worthy to receive heaven the answer is no your goodness is as filthy rags the word of God says today that if you claim to have righteousness in your life they're like filthy rags and that today you ought to drop to your knees and cry out to God and say Lord have mercy upon me and thank you God For the grace that goes beyond what I can imagine because it's my faith and belief in you that I have a blessed hope today and it is not based on how good I am or how bad I failed you. But it's on the blood. If your soul is required of you today and you stand before holy God, the only thing that will matter has the blood been applied. Are you truly born again you may ask me a question can you can you cuss and be saved can you a lot of us would say well that ought not come out of a that wouldn't be good fruits out of a Christian's life but folks my Bible tells me that the Word of God says there's nothing in your life that God will not cleanse from your life but folks if you've ever been to the well and truly been born again then you're going to turn from a lot of these things. And they will not be a part of your life anymore. It doesn't mean that you won't mess up. It doesn't mean that you can't sin. We all do. We stand in need of the Savior. But there must be a change, just like this gentleman that sat down here about three or four rows back. And Keith, I'm not pointing at you. But uh, I'm thinking about somebody right before you. That when God came into his life, and saved him and delivered him, it wasn't about being a member of a church. It wasn't about how much money he gave at tithing. It was about, do you know him? 
Do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? And folks, now we can look at his life. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. But he's a work in progress like all of us today. And there's a change that is taking place in his life. And that change must be evident in your life, male or female. That is not pointing at anybody. It's pointing at me as much as anybody. There must be a change. Okay? I felt like the Holy Spirit would have me to say that today. When we think about the merchant, which is God himself, who is looking for souls who will love him. You see, you don't have to love him. You can choose to do your own thing. You can choose to love Satan more than you do God. That's exactly what we do if we turn back to drugs, if we go back to alcohol, if we turn over to filth, if we do this and do that. All we're doing is saying, God, I believe in you, and you're a great God. I, I believe that, but I choose to go with him because it's fun. It's enjoyable. And folks, that's scary. And that's where it ought to get all of us today when we have to understand. And, and again, it's, it's for all of us. That's where that evaluation comes in. We have got to, it's just like, folks, it's like this. This old belly right here. I like to eat. And yet I know that if I eat too much, then I'm going to have the danger of having a, a heart issues like my father had. It runs in the bloodlines and the genes. I'm going to have the danger of having diabetes if I'm not careful, and I ought, to be, I ought to be about 20 pounds, at least 20 pounds lighter than what I am right now. So I have to fight it every day. Folks, if that's physical, what about spiritual? I've got to fight the devil every day in my life. I've got to fight the pull of the world to try to get me. Do you think I don't want to go and do fun things? Do you think that my eyes don't look upon something and say, wow. And I have to fight those things because it is the power of this world that is trying to pull us away. That is the reality of Jesus. Jesus breaks those bonds. I have, as I've told y'all, I have stood outside, and I'm hoping Mark will get to see it firsthand too. But I've stood outside of that tomb as I thought about and pondered. You think about something to give you goosebumps, stand outside of the tomb where they laid Jesus. And you look in there and you see where his body would have been. And I can see it right now in my mind's eye. And I've got cold chills up the back of my neck and on my arm because that's where my Savior died. And it hit home that right here is where the victory came. Not only on the cross up there at Calvary, but when he raised from the dead and overcome Satan, hell, and the grave, broke the bonds of the filth of this world and claimed victory. That devil can only have victory in your life if you let him do it, if one of you run back, the Bible tells us that a dog returns to his vomit. God, help us to not do that. Have I ever done it? I probably have more times than I'd like to admit to you. But folks, you've got to remember, do you love him or do you not? Don, if I ask you, do you love him or do you not? And I know, that I, I know what she would answer me. But that's a question. Do you love me? I believe Jesus would say today, when you think about heaven, you must think about me. Do you love me enough to let go of the things of this world? Is it fun going to a party? Yeah. Is it fun talking about people sometime? It could be. Is it fun being with people that are funny and you be around them, but you know what they're doing? They're dragging you down into a hole. And the Bible says you've got to get out of it. And that's what Jesus died at Calvary. I don't know why. I don't know why I would say it all this, but I'm just telling you what's laid on my heart this morning. John 14, 23 says this. Jesus said it. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Period. All right, listen to it. And my father will love him and will come unto him. How many of you want the father to come to you? How many of you want Jesus to hear what you got to say? And he will make our abode with him. So folks, that's the challenge for us. Do you want Jesus to be with you? He's not going to be with you in the hog pit. But he will be with you if we'll trust him. 
Dale Moody said this. He stated that he once talked to a man who said he thought there was nothing to justify us in believing in any other heaven than the one that we know right here on this earth. And Moody said, well, if this is heaven, it's a very strange one. This world of sickness, death, sorrow, and sin, he said, I pity from the depths of my heart the man or the woman who has this idea that this is heaven on earth. You remember what I said Sunday. I've said it multiple times here. You probably get tired of hearing some of these things. But I remember when Mike Jones told me that he went and witnessed to a friend of his. And this is somebody here in town that many of you would know their name. And Mike had the boldness this time to go witness to him about Jesus. And he said, I just won't be able to sleep at night unless I've told you that, that the Lord is wanting you to know him. And his answer to him is he said, I appreciate what you got to say, Mike. But the bottom line is this. He said, I got a lot of friends that have died and gone to hell. And he said, I look forward to, he said, I got one foot in hell and one foot on this earth. And I look forward to partying with my friends for the rest of eternity. He's got it totally wrong. He acts like it's heaven on earth right now. And there's a day of judgment that is coming. This world that some think is heaven is the home of sin, a hospital of sorrow, a place that has nothing in it to satisfy the soul of a man or a woman. Men go all over it. They want to get out of it. They want to take their life. I heard a man yesterday talking about when I get sick, he said, I'm going to Oregon and having a shot so that I can just go to sleep. And I said, you can't do that. He said, I bet I can too. People seem to grow tired of the blessed pleasures that it has to offer. Someone has said that the world is a stormy sea whose every wave is strewn about with the wrecks of mortals that perish in it. And every time we breathe, we breathe someone is dying somewhere. Just this weekend, Barry Bunning, these guys that was here on Sunday morning that are here because of Barry's ministry, They said Barry's not here. They said they're stacked up down at the funeral home like cordwood. Folks, people are dying. Eternity is real. Death is real, and it's coming, and we must be ready. So every time we breathe, someone is dying. And we all know that we're going to uh, we're going to not stay here, but just a little while. Our life, according to the word of God in James, is but a vapor. And it's only a shadow and it's gone. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And it'll allow me to slow down just a little bit. Save my voice because I've got to preach again here in a little while. Chapter 2 verse 11. 1 Peter. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Now, isn't that interesting? How would we be a stranger and a pilgrim, you think about the pilgrims and Thanksgiving, in this world? If this world is really supposed to be heaven on earth, if this world is our home, well, that kind of backs up then what I've been saying lately about this world is not our home. That we're just passing through. That God has put us here, breathed life into us, and because of sin, sent Jesus to die for us. And now we've been given the opportunity to choose life or choose death. One of the two. And that's where we're at. And it goes on to say, you strangers and pilgrims, abstain or abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You know what that means? Every vision that Satan, I, I'll just tell you all this much in, in, in my, my symbolism, hopefully are so simple, but if you could literally take some beautiful woman, man, that looks beautiful to look at and it grabs your attention and all your innermost being, ladies, the same thing for you. If you see some man that is beautiful to look upon and, and it makes you say, wow. If we could just take that zipper and unzip it and open it up and see the most hideous, 
horrifying looking creature which is Satan that is there to destroy you and eat you alive. It is not real. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And we must realize that, that we've got to get our eyes upon Christ. Our real home is with God. We belong to Him. And we can't allow the devil to rob us of that relationship. Folks, it's right here that, that if you believe that you can lose your salvation, you ought to have indigestion. Because if you believe that every time you mess up that your salvation goes out the window, then you got problems. Every time we sin, if that's the case. I don't know about you, but I thank God that I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe the Word of God says that Christ died once for our sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being, quick, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. I believe that God has us here today. Do I believe that Satan buffets us and torments us and tries to keep us from where we're at? I do believe that. But folks, we need to remember that Christ died one time for us, that he shed his blood, and we must understand that I have a vow that I must keep before God that if you're willing to save me from the very pit of hell, then God, I vow to you that I'm going to live for you, and I will not forget you. And I'll honor you every day of my life. And folks, that's right where we're supposed to be. There's some people I know stop their ears because they want to live like they want to live. And they want to do the things like they want to do. But folks, you must understand that you're only passing through this world. If your hope and faith are not in Christ, then consider what he did for you through his death and his resurrection. And place your faith in him today. Folks, it is not too late. It is not too late to repent. It's not too late to turn. It's not too late to beg God for forgiveness. So why do most people believe in some kind of life after death, even if they aren't particularly religious or don't think about it very much? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever wondered why most people do believe that there's something else, that there has to be something else, and they can't figure out where that comes from? Well, the Word of God tells us where it's at. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, it addresses the fact that God has placed an inner sense in each one of us that life on this earth is not all that there is. As a matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it basically says that God has also set eternity in the hearts of men. That means that there's a vacuum or a void that can only be filled. Folks, I can sit up here right now and drink Jim Beam. And I can drink it till my soul's fill and get drunk and be blown out of my mind. And it will not fill the emptiness that would be in my heart. I can snort cocaine or some other drug up my nostrils and try to get high as a kite or shoot heroin into my arm or take all kinds of other narcotics and it will not replace the void that only God fills. You see, folks, what we have to understand and what my prayer is this world would understand, and I pray that as I preach that I would help people to understand that the only thing that will thrill your soul is Jesus. Amen. He means more to life to, than all these things. I think about that song. I almost went into singing it there for a minute, and I decided better against it, Keith. But, but seriously, for all of us today, it doesn't matter if it's Doug or Pam. It doesn't matter if it's any of the Brooks. It doesn't matter if it's the Masons or the Wilburns. The only thing that will satisfy us is Jesus. And yet, think about how many times you trash him. If I were to ask you, do you, would you, if you were in one of the crowds at Calvary, would you have spit on him? Would you have spit in the face of Jesus? Would you have threw some type of vegetable or a rock or whatever and hit him? You know what you do? Every time. We turn back to the things of the world. We spit right on what he did for us. And we forget of the price that he paid.
for all of us. And that's why it's so important for us to get this and to understand that, that he has created a vacuum. And there is no drug. There is no sex. There is no fake picture that you can look at. There is nothing that the internet has on a cell phone or a television or a movie or anything else that can ever replace the peace that only God can give us. In the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, it reveals to us that God spoke to Elijah. And it wasn't by the fire, and it wasn't by the earthquake, and it wasn't by uh, the lightning and the rumbling of the ground, but it was in a still, small voice. And that's 1 Kings 19, 12. And folks, that's how God speaks to us today. He speaks to you softly. He may speak to Greg Brooks and tell him something. And I can't hear it. His wife can't hear it. But he can hear it. If our heart is where he can speak to us. God may be speaking into Mark's life. And I can't hear it. Wanda can't hear it necessarily. But Mark can hear it. You know, sometimes we'll get discouraged and beat down. We get tired. We don't rest good. And before long, we can get beat down and despondent, and you're about ready to throw up your hands and quit. And a still, small voice, which is the Holy Spirit. Folks, the Holy Spirit could come down in this place, and somebody could take off running. Somebody may raise a hand and say, Praise the Lord. Somebody may say, Think about it, preacher. Preach on. Amen. That's manifestation. Manife- manifestation of the Holy Spirit in people's lives where you just got to say or do something. Some people might even stand up and just want to say, I praise the Lord today for what he's done for me. I think about this fellow who is my brother-in-law that will come and take that little baby, which is his grandbaby, and I think it's powerful. But he'll sit there with tears pouring down his face and hold that baby, asking God. And God's changing his life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Folks, that's how it's got to be with us today. God's got to speak to us and help us to understand that in that still, small voice. So I beg you, don't ignore that inner voice that speaks to you. The devil will try to crowd it out. He'll try to make you not be able to hear it. He'll try to have the music so loud or something going on or being at a party, and you can't hear him because you've got to get quiet and say, Lord, speak for your servant hears. And we've got to be willing to hear that. Paul wrote to warn us of denying God's truth and tells us uh, that all people are going to be without excuse. Pam, that means that someday when you stand before God, and I know this is direct, but I'm just telling you, this is how it applies to all of us. I could be saying, Gary, as I sit there, but you'll have no excuse because we know. And I, know, I think I know her heart. She's here at the house of God, wants to be here. But I'm saying that's how direct we must be, is Lord, allow the Holy Spirit. God, is anybody, does anybody in here want to go to hell? If you go, you choose to go on your own. And those folks that are listening to me right now, it ain't all about these people right here. Anybody that's listening, you choose to go there. And it's your willful decision to violate and void what God has done for you. You know, I thank God in the power of the blood. And it probably goes far beyond what I can even comprehend or imagine. And I thank God for that. But folks, we we violate what God has done for us. Look over at Romans chapter 1. And this is the point I was trying to get, Pam, when I was using you as an example. And I hope you don't mind me doing that. But uh, I was using her as an example. But that's how she's, she's quiet. She's pleasant. You can sense the presence of the Lord about her life. But at the same time, she will be held without excuse. Gary will be held without excuse. Keith and Libby will be held without excuse. Terry will be held without excuse. And the, and the list goes on. And we have no excuse. Listen to what verse 1 or chapter 1 Verses 19 and 20 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, 
Now, how would you hold the truth in unrighteousness? You know what I believe it is? You live in a lie. You ain't really got it. God help us not to be like that. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. So you know what I believe? In here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 of us, Dwight, 13, me, 14. There's about 14 of us in here. And I hope a great number of people that are watching tonight on our Wednesday night broadcast. But the bottom line is this. Is that God says we'll, all of us will be without excuse. And that we will manifest through our actions and how we live to what's really truly in the heart. And folks, it ought to get us. I hope all of you have no desire to ever entertain taking the risk of going to hell. As God is eternal, so we sense also in our own hearts that we too must be eternal. I want you to go with me to Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. And, and let's look at that passage for just a moment. And we're going to look at verse 15. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the place, a holy place, and with him also that is a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So God lives forever in our life and wants us to be humble and to trust him and to allow him to be made into his image. You know what I can tell you today? I know and I realize I fall far short of what God would have for me. And yet I know at the same time that the Word of God, and Isaiah is telling me this, that God's desire is that I would be conformed to His image and to be like Him. And so that's what we must do. I think about verse 20 there. It says, but the wicked, on the other hand, are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest and whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Folks, I'm telling you, when you're away from God, and all of you, if you've been like me, and you've, we, we've all strayed, and we've got off track, and, and, uh, and if you're like me, you get out there, and it may not be horrible things, but we get out there, and we'll be thinking to ourselves, sometimes kneeling at this altar, God, how did I get here? How did I get in this place in my life? I'm like that verse right there, for the wicked are like a troubled sea. There is no rest. You can look at somebody that's living apart from God and not living obedient to Him, and you can see the trouble in their face. You can hear it on their voice, see it in their eyes, as God ages them right before you. Folks, may it not be for us. God says that His burden is easy and His yoke is light. And what that means is all of us tonight, all of you that are listening tonight, God is telling me today through this message to remind people that in this Thanksgiving and Christmas season as we enter in, to lay down all the filth of this world and to take Him fully and to guide your life. You may say, well, I've blowed it, Pastor. I've messed up big time. Maybe there's somebody that's listening today that's struggling with life and doing things they shouldn't do. You might say, well, well, what do I do? I've messed up. I've allowed the flesh to pull me away. Then, folks, my Bible tells me that you ought to get on your face before God, get on your knees, cry out to Him, ask for His mercy and forgiveness, and then get up and get back in the path and walk the way that He's called us to do. Knowing that He's the only one that can give us that victory that we need today. We're just about through for today. Go back over, if you would, to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. If I can get over there myself. And I want to look at verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. 
Now, there used to be a rock and roll song that used some of the scriptures that's found right here. And I don't want us to think about the rock and roll song. I believe it was the birds, I believe, I think. But it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So we know that there's a season that for everything and there's a purpose under heaven for everything that we do. Now look at verse 6. It says, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. And folks, my challenge to you today is your pastor. My challenge to you today as a preacher of the gospel for those of you that are tuned in tonight is cast away. Let us all cast away those things that the world would try to tie us down with. Cast away the things of this world and help us to understand that there's a time now where we must trust in Him and lean upon Him. A time to get, a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. May we keep him. May we keep that relationship intact. Folks, my, my prayer is this. If one of you were to be called out of here today or tomorrow or next week or next year or 10 years from now, whenever that time comes that you will have chosen that I'm going to follow him, I'm going to be found faithful to him. All of us will be able to kneel at his feet and say, God, I am unworthy. I am a sinner. But God, I've cried out for your salvation. My Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That goes beyond, far beyond what the preacher might think. Sometimes we're hard on one another. Sometimes we're judgmental. But I believe God loves us that much. That he said, if you'll call upon me, you'll be saved. So my prayers today is this, that everyone will hear and exercise the precious gift that we have in salvation. And the privilege we have in searching the scripture to seek the one who died for you. May God help us to know him better. May God drive us to the book of John that we're introduced clearly to Jesus and the personality and the character of Jesus. And folks, I want to challenge all of us today as we enter into this holiday season full tilt. Please don't give up on God. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I feel like that somebody tonight, and maybe it's somebody listening where God is saying, please don't give up on me. Please don't let go of me. Because you're getting awfully dangerously close to let me go. Folks, don't give up on him. Give up your running from him. Be thankful and grateful. Because I want you to know this. God has not given up on you. And I believe that Jesus today stands if it were. The other day I heard of a story of my daughter. It's a long story, but her little boy got out of a, a door that didn't latch properly. When his mama went back and got the baby and came back to get him, he's gone. He's three and a half years old. And she panicked. And she took the baby and she went on the front porch and she was screaming his name and crying for him. You can only imagine most of us as parents have lost our children at one point or time. Store, grocery store, in the neighborhood or whatever. And she looked out and there he was in the middle of the road up in front of a neighbor's house in a subdivision. And he was running back to her. And she took off running to meet him. Folks, the whole part of that is she got a scare and she's learned really to double down on her efforts to keep her kids locked in there. But folks, that's just like Jesus. It's just like God. We may give up on one another. We may say, you've done past the point of no return. That ain't God. 
God still stands at a distance. And he casts an eye your way. And he says, come back to me. Let me hold you. Let me keep you. Let me have you prepare for this place that I talk about. Folks, please understand, he ain't give up on you. Whoever that's for tonight, I pray that you'll receive it. And uh, if you would, join me with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this privilege and this honor to be in this house tonight. We thank you, God, for the privilege we have to read your word. And Lord, I've tried to do the best I can to share the truths of the pages that have been written of notes long ago that, Father, you have used for this day. God, I pray that you'll bless us and strengthen us. I pray that you'll help us, God, to be directed by your power. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that your name would be honored and magnified. And God, help us to make sure that our relationship is intact with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.